we're going to be talking about the layers of the heart. And if you guys haven't already, go watch my video on the structures of the heart. And I think that will help you guys be more familiar with the heart. Otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So before we move on and actually look at a picture and point out the layers of the heart, I just want to quickly list the layers of the heart that we'll be talking about. All right. So the layers of the heart are the endocardium of the heart, and then comes your myocardium of the heart. Next, you're going to come across the epicardium, or also called the visceral layer of your pericardium. All right, so the epicardium is also called the visceral layer of the pericardium. And then you're going to come across the parietal layer of pericardium. And last but not least, we're going to come across a layer of fibrous tissue. All right, that's going to be the last surrounding layer of the heart. So let's actually go look at a picture so this all makes sense. So let's start off by locating where the endocardium layer of the heart is. And the endocardium layer of the heart is actually going to be the layer that's on the most inside of the heart. So the one I'm going to be outlining at the moment is going to be the endocardium of the heart. It's actually going to be all the way coming down here, and it's going to surround the valves of the heart and go all the way on the inner side of the heart. And as you guys can see, that blood in the ventricles and the atria of the heart are going to be in direct contact with the endocardium of the heart. All right, so, and it also follows the blood vessels too. All right, so it's always going to be on the innermost side or the innermost layer of the heart, and it's going to be surrounding your valves. That's why endocarditis, which is inflammation of your endocardium layer of the heart, that's why it affects your valves, because the endocardium of the heart is also surrounding the valves of your heart, right? So I forgot to draw it here. All right, so that's basically the endocardium of the heart. Now, let's move on to the myocardium of the heart. So let's quickly go back and check mark the endocardium of the heart is what we just went over. And now we're going to tackle the myocardium of the heart. So the myocardium of the heart is the muscle tissue of the heart. All right, that's the cardiac muscle tissue. It's responsible for generating force and contracting the heart. All right, without this muscle tissue, without this myocardium, you wouldn't be able to contract the heart. So knowing that, guys, let's locate where the myocardium is. And the myocardium is actually all of this red tissue that I'm coloring in right here. And as you guys can see, it's actually a big layer. All right, It's actually the biggest layer among all the layers of your heart. right? Because it has to generate a lot of force to contract your heart. So all of this is your myocardium. All right, so we have two layers down. We have the endocardium down, and we just finished locating where the myocardium of the heart was. Now let's tackle the epicardium, also called the visceral layer of the pericardium. All right, so the visceral layer of the pericardium and or the epicardium is just outside lining the myocardium of the heart. All right, so it goes just outside, lining the myocardium, and kind of folds back from here and creates a little space. All right, and we'll go over that space in a sec. First, let's identify or locate where the visceral layer of the pericardium is and or also called the epicardium. So the visceral layer of the pericardium is 
the layer that's lining just outside the myocardium. All right, so right here, see this layer? This is the visceral layer, all right, because it's attached to the myocardium. It's outlining the myocardium of the heart. So the green outline that I'm drawing is going to be called the visceral layer of the pericardium, or also called the epicardium. All right, so I'll, I'll name it both for you guys right here. So it's also called the visceral layer of the pericardium. And similarly, guys, this outer layer right here that I'm outlining all the way around is going to be called the parietal layer. Parietal layer of the pericardium. All right. So now we've gone over the endocardium. the myocardium, which was an orange. And just now, we just went over the epicardium and or called the visceral layer of the pericardium. And we just finished going over the parietal layer of the pericardium. Now, let's talk about the gap between the visceral layer of the pericardium and the parietal layer of the pericardium. All right, let me color in the gap that I'm talking about. I'm talking about this gap right here between the epicardium and the parietal layer of the pericardium. This whole gap is going to be called the pericardial sac or the pericardial cavity. All right, so let me write that down. So what's this gap going to be called? The gap is going to be called the pericardial cavity, or it's sometimes also called the pericardial sac. All right, either one is fine. And this gap isn't just a gap that has nothing in it. All right, it also has a role because the pericardial cavity has serous fluid in it. All right, and why does this pericardial cavity have serous fluid in it? Well, the reason is, is because the serous fluid, all right, the serous, serous fluid, not serious. Oh, I can't even spell. The serous fluid in the pericardial cavity, pericardial cavity, actually has a very vital role, all right? And what's that vital role? Well, the serous fluid helps reduce friction between the parietal layer, parietal layer of pericardium, and and just for just to shorten things up, I'll just write and epicardium. But you guys should also know that the epicardium is also called the visceral layer of the pericardium. And because of the fact that the serous fluid reduces friction in between the parietal layer of the pericardium and the epicardium, this will help the heart to move in a much smoother fashion, all right? So the serous fluid will help the heart move in a much smoother fashion. So because the serous fluid reduces friction in between these two layers, all right, it's going to help the heart expand and contract in a much smoother fashion. All right, so, so far we've talked about the endocardium, the myocardium, the epicardium, um, we've talked about the parietal layer of the pericardium, and we've talked about the serous fluid in the pericardial cavity. Now we have one more layer to talk about, and that's going to be the layer I'm drawing in right now with brown. All right, 
this layer is going to be called the fibrous pericardium. All right, so the fibrous in brown, it's going to be called the fibrous pericardium. So um, as we can see, there's actually three layers that make up the pericardium. And what are those three layers? Well, we said we have the visceral pericardium, and that's remembered, that's also called the epicardium, all right? And we have a parietal layer of the pericardium, and we just talked about the fibrous layer of the pericardium. So these three layers make up the pericardium. All right, guys, so that was pretty much all the layers of the heart. And just before we start our review, one thing I forgot to mention, and it's actually a pretty important structure of the heart, is this structure right here in between the two ventricles of the heart. All right, this structure is called the intra intraventricular septum. All right, and this structure is actually pretty important. All right, it's not really a layer of the heart, but it's a it's more like a structure of the heart. And this layer, as you can see, is between the right ventricle, which is right here, and it's between the left ventricle. All right, so the intraventricular septum separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle. And we'll talk about this more in the video where I make, um, where I talk about how blood flows through the heart. But the reason why this is very important is because you got to keep in mind that there's blood sitting in your right ventricle and in your left ventricle. All right, there's blood sitting here and we don't want the blood to cross from the right ventricle into the left ventricle or to cross from the left ventricle into the right ventricle. So pretty much the intraventricular septum separates both ventricles. All right, it separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle and vice versa. All right, so now that we've got everything down, right, we just went over all the layers of the heart and we just pointed out an, an important structure in the heart. Let's do a quick review session before we end this video. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw the layers of the heart and point out the names, all right, and which one starts on the inside and how the layers of the heart progress from inside to outside. And if you guys want, go ahead and pause the video and try to list the layers of the heart, starting from the inside of the heart and going all the way to the outside of the heart. All right, so let's, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So let's represent the first layer of the heart starting from the inside, which if you guys remember, is called the endocardium of the heart. All right, this is the layer of the heart that um, surrounds the insides of the chambers of the heart. So the left ventricle, left atrium, right ventricle, right atrium, and it surrounds the valves of the heart and um, it also surrounds the insides of some blood vessels in the heart. All right, so what do we say this layer was? Well, this is the innermost layer of the heart, and it's going to be called the endocardium. All right, now let's move on to the biggest layer of the heart. And hopefully you guys remember, it's going to be huge, all right? It's going to be much bigger than the other layers of the heart. And this layer is going to be called our myocardium of the heart. All right, if you guys remember, this is the muscle layer of the heart, the cardiac muscle. Okay, this is going to be responsible for generating that force and contracting the heart. So this layer is going to be called the myocardium of the heart. You can, you can tell that the myocardium of the heart is a muscle of the heart because of the word myo, all right? The word myo means muscle. All right, so we have the endocardium and the myocardium of the heart so far. 
And let's move on to the next layer of the heart, which is just outside surrounding the myocardium of the heart. And hopefully you guys remember that there's actually two names for this layer of the heart. All right, so the layer that I'm talking about is called the visceral layer of the pericardium. All right, so the layer I'm coloring in right now, remember, is just outside lining the myocardium, and it's going to be called the visceral layer of the pericardium. And if you guys just need a quickly reference, um, if maybe you guys forgot, then make sure to go back in the video and see the layers of the heart on the actual heart. So it'll help you better understand this review. All right, so, um, so we have the visceral layer of the pericardium. And remember that this is also called the epicardium of the heart. All right, um, so now let's go ahead and cover the next layer of the heart, which is actually gonna be right here, okay? And again, hopefully you guys remember why I'm drawing it not right after the epicardium. Because remember, there's gonna be a space between this layer and this layer, all right? We already know what this layer is called. We just went over it, it's the epicardium. But this layer is gonna be called the parietal layer of the pericardium. Okay, so there's going to be a gap between the parietal layer of the pericardium and the epicardium of the heart. And that gap is, remember, going to be filled with serous fluid through it, all right? Serous fluid will be in the gap between the epicardium and the parietal layer of the pericardium. And now that we've got that covered, we literally have one more layer to go, and this is going to be the outer fibrous pericardium of the heart, All right? This fibrous pericardium will help hold the structure of the heart and help the heart attach to other structures in the thoracic area of the body. So this is called the fibrous pericardium. All right, sweet. All right, and just like that, guys, we have finished reviewing the layers of the heart. All right, and um, just before we end the video, let me quickly uh, say that, remember, this was going from the inside of the heart to the outside of the heart. All right, so it's going from the inside to the outside. Okay, so we got the endocardium, the myocardium, the epicardium, we have the serous fluid, which is remember right here. And we had the parietal layer of the pericardium. And last but not least, on the very outside of the heart, we have our nice fibrous pericardium. All right, so hopefully you guys successfully learned all the layers of the heart. And if you haven't already, again, um, go ahead and watch my video on the structures of the heart because my next video will be on the pulmonary circulation of the heart and how the blood flows through the heart and to the lungs and you know how um, the deoxygenated blood becomes oxygenated. So um, I would really recommend you guys to understand the structures of the heart and these layers of the heart that we talked about in this video really well so you guys are fully equipped to understand the pathway of blood through the heart in my next video. All right, so I really hope to see you guys there.